attacked because they're Muslim. And so Islamophobia is real. It is, uh, it is impacting Muslim Canadians from across the country. And it is, a, unfortunately, a lived reality for far too many Muslim Canadians. And so as a government, uh, we're standing shoulder to shoulder with the, with the Muslim community at this difficult time. Um, I know uh, that uh, there's absolutely more work to be done. And we are also marking five years since the Quebec mosque shooting that also resulted in a number of lives being lost and communities being impacted, uh, and even as we speak. So Islamophobia is real. We have to redouble our, our efforts to, to support Muslim communities across this country. And one of the ways we've done that as a government is to designate January 29th as the National Day of Remembrance and Action Against Islamophobia and in support of religious freedoms. And in that regard, we had a national summit on Islamophobia, which was able to convene uh, Muslim leadership from across the country. And a number of key recommendations came out of that summit. And one of the main recommendations was the appointment of a special representative to combat Islamophobia. And we are moving forward with that, uh, with that recommendation. So today, I'm happy to announce that the call for applications, the application process is open for anyone interested to fulfill the role to become Canada's special representative to combat Islamophobia. Uh, the special representative to combat Islamophobia will be the champion, the expert, the advocate, and the advisor to the government on Islamophobia. This individual will work with a team. They will be supported by funding through Budget 2022, um, which will, their job will be to advise the government, to advise the Prime Minister, and to work with other levels of government, stakeholders, institutions throughout the country, they will report, they will advise, they will issue recommendations, and they will work tirelessly to promote work to combat Islamophobia, uh, including collaborating with, uh, with, with partner countries and to do the work that is necessary domestically. We know that uh, through the work of the government, uh, our, through our anti-racism strategy, part of that approach has been to put together a national plan to combat hate the National Action Plan to Combat Hate. And as part of that, of course, we are working very closely with Muslim Canadians, with Muslim Canadian leadership, with the imams, with, uh, with advocates, to make sure that you know, Islamophobia is identified and targeted uh, as one of the hateful uh, uh, rhetoric and one of the hateful ide ideologies that we need to continue to combat as a country until it is no more. And that includes supporting Muslim Canadians at this difficult time, including uh, supporting, better supporting survivors through the criminal justice process, fighting online harms, making sure that we're funding those on the ground who are doing the work to combat racism, discrimination, and hate. And so today uh, is a somber occasion. It is, as I said, the first year anniversary of this difficult time. I was in London on Saturday ahead of the Prime Minister's visit uh, to London to join the Muslim community and Londoners on Sunday. And I can tell you, uh, the, you know, one of the amazing gestures is that in London, the Afsal family is known as our London family because Londoners have embraced the community and they've said that Muslim Canadians will not be alone in their fight against Islamophobia. And the uh, local chapter of the Muslim Association of Canada has dedicated uh, a community space in commemoration of the family. And so you see Canadians coming together and standing with Muslim Canadians to fight Islamophobia every single day. And as a government, we have to do our part. That means funding the, na national, anti uh, the national plan to combat uh, uh, hate and making sure that we support the, uh, the special representative in their work. And today is a main step in that process to open the applications and hopefully get through the, uh, the transparent, fair, merit-based process to select the, next, uh, the, 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 special, the first ever special representative to combat Islamophobia. I want to really thank the uh, Council of Imams as well as the National Council of Canadian Muslims for the hard work and their advocacy 
and the support that they've given the government to get this right. And we'll continue to work with you to make sure that as we go through the, uh, the selection process, that we, that we continue to listen to you in further ways to combat Islamophobia. Assalamu alaikum, jazakum la khair. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Hussein. Um, so as, as the minister said, uh, applications are now open. And uh, to talk more about it, one of our pioneers in parliament, uh, the Honorable uh, Minister Omar Al-Kabra, our Minister of Transportation, will say a few words. Minister Al-Kabra. Thank you very much, uh, Iqbar. Salam alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Um, let me just first say, uh, acknowledge the work that is being done by MP Ikra Khalid, my friend and my colleague and my neighbor, Mrs. Saga, over the years in combating Islamophobia, in uh, helping shepherd the motion in the House of Commons in 2016 that calls out Islamophobia, where unfortunately it was surprisingly to me at the time, and it continues to be a surprise to me, that there are still political leaders that want to fight that notion, that want to rec avoid recognizing that Islamophobia is real. And not only is, is it real, but it kills. So Ikra, thank you for your ongoing championship and advocacy and, and, and for enduring such hate sometimes that uh, is out in the public for all of us to see that you have to deal with just because you're championing uh, combating Islamophobia. And Minister Hussein, we're all grateful to your leadership as Minister of Inclusion uh, for your advocacy and for today's announcement. This is yet another concrete step that our government is doing under your leadership and the leadership of the Prime Minister to combat Islamophobia. I also want to acknowledge NCCM and the delegates who are here with us today for meeting with uh, members of parliaments and ministers and policy uh, makers to share the perspective of the Muslim community from across the country about the anguish and the frustration and, and the fear that members of the community feeling on a daily basis hearing of different stories and incidents that resonate and, and, and cause a lot of anxiety. So I want to thank NCCM and all of the delegates who are here in person with us or, or around the country who are ensuring that their voice is heard. You know, our government takes the issue of Islamophobia extremely seriously. Islamophobia, again, not only is it real, but it kills. And other than, we, in 2016, supported a motion in the House of Commons that called out Islamophobia and committed government's action to confronting it. The a committee, a parliamentary, a parliamentarian committee of parliamentarians, has studied Islamophobia and its root causes and presented a list of action plan to combat it. And our government is working on implementing it. We've, for the first time in Canada's history, we've put white supremacist hate group on a terrorist watch list. We are appointing diverse people from different backgrounds at government institutions to ensure that their lived experience, that their perspective is incorporated in much of the consultations and the discussions and the decisions that governments in all of institutions make. We've reformed oversight bodies that ensure that law enforcement agencies are held accountable for policies and actions. We're ensuring that Community organizations, including mosques and places of worship, have support, financial support, to enhance their security. We're making sure that assault-style weapons are banned in, country, in, in Canada and further gun control measures, including red flags, are implemented. We're working on reforming our justice system to ensure that the definition of hate is clearly outlined, plus ensuring that there are other tools that our law enforcement agencies can utilize to combat hate. We're, we're working with online and social media companies to ensure that there's accountability for online hate, that those who are promoting hate are, are, are addressed and, and confronted. There's a lot of work to be done, and today's announcement is yet another step in confronting uh, this uh, insidious uh, 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 form of hate that exists within our society. Um, we've all heard politicians come to the mic and condemn what happened a year ago in London um, and what happened in the Quebec, Quebec mosque. But yet we still see some politicians who flirt, who play footsie with organizations 
that are promoting hate, that are speaking things that I know cause a lot of Canadians discomfort and, and makes them feel unwelcome in their own country. So I call on all politicians to re-examine the type of political rhetoric that is being utilized today and that we need to stand together not only in thoughts and prayers but in real action to confront uh, this existing threat within our society. So uh, once again, I'm grateful to all uh, uh, Canadians who are advocating to, to confront hate and, and deal with it. I'm grateful to the Prime Minister, to uh, the leadership of Minister Hussein, uh, Ikra Khalid and others in our caucus that we need to remain focused on delivering and confronting this. But ultimately, this is a societal issue and all of us need to work together to eradicating it. Thank you very much. Well, we, uh, you know, we didn't want to sacrifice speed for getting it right. So we had to work with the Muslim Canadian community, including uh, advocacy groups like NCCM, like the Canadian Council of uh, the, the Canadian Council of Imams, who I met recently, uh, to get input on the mandate of the special representative, on uh, the parameters, on how they are actually going to implement their uh, their, their mandate, on how they will get the, the right supports. Uh, it's one thing to, to, to create a position, but you got to get it right, and you have to create a position that will uh, get the confidence of the community. And so that takes time. Uh, getting it right takes time. And now uh, with this call for applications, we are spreading it across the country. We want people to apply to fulfill this role, and we hope to move as expeditiously as possible. I think, I think it's a mixed approach. There's work that's being done on the ground. We have to support that. Uh, uh, one of the best ways for government to support this work is, is not to do everything. It's to support those who have the expertise, who have the credibility on the ground, who've been doing this for so long and who know uh, and who have the relationships of trust with the, with the Muslim community and with other racialized and religious groups. And we need to fund them more. We need to support the good work that they're doing. Uh, but in addition to that, we need to take action as well as a government, and we have. Uh, but we need, to take, we need to do more work, including, as Minister Al Gabra mentioned, uh, online harms, uh, making sure that the criminal justice system better supports survivors of hate-motivated violence. Uh, that we, we need to move ahead with the creation of the support fund to, uh, to support survivors of hate-motivated violence for uninsured costs that are currently not covered by our public health system. We need to make sure that uh, we continue to listen to, to the communities that this uh, form of hate impacts so that we can find further ways to support them. And yes, there is a role for other orders of government, but we have to do our part, and we are. Thank you. Any other Jim Brown, that was a Canadian. Yeah. Uh, speaking of promises, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Al Gabra mentioned the online hate bill. What is going on with the bill, and, and why is it taking well, as you know, we have a, a very busy legislative uh, uh, schedule. Minister Rodriguez is leading that charge, but it is a priority for our government. What happens online has real-world uh, consequences, and we are committed to making sure that social uh, media platforms, as Minister Al Gabra said, are held accountable for the hate speech that is posted online. Uh, they have a responsibility to Canadians, and we have to make sure that we, we hold them to that responsibility. Another promise that emerged from the uh, summit on Islamophobia, uh, Muslim charities, many are concerned about being targeted by the Canada Revenue Agency, and you appointed uh, a process to look into that. We've heard almost nothing on that, and in fact, the, the government is fighting one charity that's restricted status in the federal court. Uh, 
Can you explain the lack of an action there? Well, I, I don't want to comment on an ongoing uh, court matter, but what I will say is that uh, is that the review is going on, so I don't want to prejudge uh, the, the work of, 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 of the investigator. But what I will say is that we need to listen to the community more uh, when they highlight uh, issues around law enforcement or, or the Canada Revenue Agency or any other government agency for that matter to make sure that we're getting it right. Uh, just because policies work for most people doesn't mean that it doesn't uh, disproportionately harm others. And so we have to always uh, be open to uh, criticism and, and, and engagement from the community, including Muslim Canadians, on how we can better deliver government services. And that includes the Canada Revenue Agency, it includes CBSA, it includes, quite frankly, every, uh, every government service or, or, or agency that delivers work or engages with Canadians. Last question? If there's not, then thank you, everyone.